I do that to be right, I get like six pieces with three or four cuts, or eight pieces. Um, hey guys, Ariel over here at Fine Ant, where if you hear other chewing, Riley is working on the bone on the ground right about in front of the camera. Um, so that's what that noise is. Anyway, splitting a little more firewood, probably, I don't know, another hour or two, and I will have um, that whole bin that you saw in the last video completely full to the top, which should more than last me through the entire winter. This one, just in case you're wondering, is just about the biggest round that I get for my stove. So it takes a few more cuts than most of them. But of course I get a few more pieces. Anyway, what I wanted to discuss today, and it's easier for me to talk while I work a lot of the time, so that I can't be listening to a book at the same time, um, is can you do this alone? This being, I guess, several things. This is kind of in response to a bunch of questions I've gotten over time. Um, can you do, uh, can you move into a tiny house? Can you live off grid? Um, can you do those things as a single person, as a single woman? Um, I've gotten all kinds of variations on those questions. Uh, I've got two short answers, um, yes and no. <laughs> First, obviously yes. I am a single person, I am a woman, and I do do this. I'm part way into my fifth, fifth year of doing so. So, uh, yes, absolutely you can. On the other hand, I would have to say, no way. I don't think anybody can actually do everything completely on their own, whether you're male or female or young or old. I don't even think most, um, probably couples, possibly families, especially if the family's big enough, um, but I don't even think most couples can actually do everything on their own. Um, this is in no way to discourage somebody if you are single or whatever from making changes and um, moving toward the kind of life you want, because I think anybody can do it. I do. But uh, on the other hand, I think whether you are single or not, you're going to have to, um, we have to have help with different things. Um, it's just, it's almost impossible for any one human being to truly do every single thing to be um, self-sufficient. But do you have to be married or have a family? Absolutely not. Um, for me, the way this works, because I'm single, this is just again, my personal experience, is that I do a lot of things. Obviously, I split my own wood. Um, you saw me cut it all into rounds. To get the wood, though, which all comes from just the, the dead trees standing in the um, forest around my house, ones that fall over, um, different pathways and lanes, all that kind of stuff, uh, I did have some help. I went out there with my chainsaw and my one neighbor and friend brought his tractor and uh, we just cut lengths. I mean, you guys saw me cut them into rounds that were however long and set them on the forks on the front of the tractor as we went to, you know, cut this tree into lengths, stack them on the forks, go over there, cut that tree into lengths, stack them on the forks. And he drove them up and dumped them right here where I could handily um, turn them into rounds and now split them. So that was super helpful because I don't have a tractor. I could have, uh, you know, got it all my, myself eventually. I would have had to, um, you know, cut it into rounds before bringing it back here because I couldn't uh, carry around those longer lengths that easily. And it could have worked, but it was absolutely very helpful to have a friend who could um, do something like that. I, and I've had assistance like that, um, 
with all kinds of things in my entire life. I mean, I'm really grateful for the, the skills my parents taught me when I was a child, um, how to cook, how to garden, how to, most importantly, I'd say how to learn things. So whatever else I wanted to learn in life that I didn't already know, um, I've been pretty much able to figure out how to learn if I cared about it. Um, so, you know, definitely appreciate that. And then just different, um, you know, friends over the years and acquaintances and bosses and, and so on. I've, and coworkers, I've, I've learned a lot of different things from all of those people and, and had help, um, with all sorts of things. I, I don't think any of us have a strict, strict trade system going on or barter system. Um, though you certainly can do that and I have done that for things. I've bartered, um, I think we all have some skill or another. For me, I like to cook. That's one of mine. Most other humans like to eat, so that one works well for me. Um, I have in the past bartered meals for, um, uh, to auto mechanics for work on my vehicles, because that sure is not one of my skills. Um, I've bartered meals to a gym owner in exchange for gym membership. I have um, exchanged firewood for uh, fruits uh, and berries um, from somebody. They still had berry patches and such, but they were getting a little old to be able to do their own firewood, so we did that kind of trade. Um, so there's a lot of things like that you can do. I, I don't think that necessarily making meals is, you know, going to be everyone's skill by any means, but maybe you are the mechanic or the um, photographer. Oh, that's another one I've been able to do sometimes. Do somebody's, I do mostly wildlife and, and stuff, but that's more my thing, but, you know, do somebody's family uh, Christmas photos or um, even shot a few weddings over time. Um, not, not often, that's, that's a little high stress. I never promise anyone I just that they'll get anything. I say I'm not a professional wedding photographer. If you want that, hire one. Um, but anyway, different, different things like that. And able to trade those things for, for things that I can't do, don't want to do, or um, need help with. And if you guys saw, like, I did a video last year on snow shoveling. I do shovel a good bit of snow. Now, it hasn't snowed in like a week or two. I actually like some new snow <laughs> so that it covers up all the tracks and fills in everything, makes it nice and clean, makes it easier to see what comes by the house. Um, if it's been too long since it snowed, you, it gets harder and harder to tell what was a uh, fresh track and what was uh, an older one. But uh, So I do a lot of snow shoveling, but there's also a fairly long lane to get into my house. I don't shovel that whole lane. Uh, one of my neighbors who does plowing for a bunch of people comes with his either plow or snow blower, depending on the snowfall, and clears it for me. In exchange, I make a lot of his meals. That kind of system works really well for me because, again, I like to cook, and I don't happen to own a tractor with a snowblower. don't particularly want to either. It's, uh, it's just not so much my realm. But that probably gives you some ideas, whatever, uh, whatever your individual skills are. Um, you know, the, you can probably find people to, um, who do know how to do the thing that you're needing to um, trade with. And how do you find those people? I get asked that sometimes. Um, the more remote you get, in, in location, um, sometimes the harder that can be, but sometimes the easier. I mean, I think people living on the same little uh, country road, in my experience, often tend to be more prone to helping each other than, than folks maybe even in the same apartment building in a bigger city. Um, but I'm trying to think, I mean, I don't know. I've met people a lot of times by working for them. I've met people through 
other mutual friends. Um, met, when I when I waited tables, I met quite a few people doing that. Um, that uh, it's not my favorite job, but that can be a really good way to meet a lot of local people, especially if you work in a, a place that's kind of like the little local breakfast joint. Um, I don't even know how I've met everyone. Friends of friends, you know, go to somebody's dinner party at their house and, and just chat with people there. Um, but anyway, I, I do think we all need some help because I don't think anybody can do all of it. I And there's lots of people out there that can help. And sometimes that help is just um, learning things from others, like watching their YouTube videos and their successes and, and mistakes. Um, or going to, it was a lot of fun this year to attend a couple conferences with other homesteaders and listen to the various um, speakers and talk to different people there who have done um, different things than myself or done the same things in different ways. Um, that can be a good way to meet people. Um, you could probably even, Craigslist isn't, isn't that active in this area, just where I live, but I know it is across a lot of the country. Um, we have another local Facebook group here that people use more for buy and sell and trade and whatever, but um, you can often find people that way too, you know, post uh, whatever. I, I need help with splitting wood. I can cook you a meal, make you a pie, walk your dog, babysit your child, fix your car, you know, there's, I'm sure there's a million more things I'm not even thinking of. You guys should, uh, let's put together a good list here. Comment down below and tell me um, what are some of the cool trades that you've either, or cool skills or things you've been able to trade to somebody for something you needed or that somebody, or that you acquired from somebody in exchange for helping them um, with something. Because I think that is really how how life should work best. Um, hi, baby boy. You done chewing your bone? Yeah. Um, I did grow up in a community that was really good at that. No, I did not grow up Amish. <laughs> I get that question all the time. I did grow up around a lot of Amish. Um, my family was brethren, not Amish. Um, if you're not familiar with all the little differences between different plain or Anabaptist groups. Um, probably doesn't seem that different. But anyway, um, the, those plain communities in general are, uh, they're not heaven on earth. People there are not all perfect, not by any means. They're all humans too. But one thing they are really good at is taking care of each other um, and, and helping out with what needs done. And so if you can arrange your life, and it doesn't have to be part of a, you know, one of those churches or, um, or even necessarily any church, but to have a good community of friends, uh, neighbors, acquaintances, like-minded people. I have several friends who have, you know, moved their location where they live to be um, around more people that had similar interests or goals or, or values to themselves to kind of facilitate this um, process, but it, it really can work well. Like growing up, anytime a, um, you know, young family would have a new baby, several of the teenage girls in the area, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds, would often go over and help, you know, cook, do laundry, clean the house, watch the other kids, you know, whatever the case was. And at least in my household, and I think in many of them, um, even if you were offered payment for doing that, um, there was an expectation from my parents that this is something we do to help other people because we help other people and one day we might need help and um, that's not something we expect to be paid for. And, and especially if you stick around in a community like that, it, it really does work. They, uh, you know, I might have helped somebody when I was 13 and had I stayed put in the area and gotten married and been having babies, um, you know, th that person, you know, that baby that was born when I helped them 
would probably be a teenager and uh, have showed up at my house to uh, help me when I had my babies. Um, or just, I mean, you've probably all at least heard of the idea of like an Amish barn raising. Um, this happens in, in other playing communities just up the road from my parents. A tornado came through one one day. That's fairly rare in that area, but it does happen. Um, and wiped out several of the um, farm buildings on, on a few neighboring farms. And by the next day, you know, other farmers had showed up with with uh, cattle trucks, hauled all the cows off to their own places to milk them. Um, the, uh, I'd say just about every guy in the community had showed up to um, help dismantle the, the rubble and rebuild a new barn. Every woman in the community had showed up with more food than all those men could possibly consume while they were working. Um, and you just, you just help people. And, and nobody expected any kind of payment for doing that. You just knew that you helped people if they need it. And sooner or later you might need something and, and those people were going to be there to help you. And I just, I think that is a really ideal way to live in the way uh, many of us lived before um, before the more modern systems of everyone kind of contracting out their life to other people. And, and if that's what you prefer to do, I, I don't object. But if you're wondering about, can you do this kind of thing? And again, that could be several things because I do multiple things that I get asked questions about. Um, can you do it by yourself? Absolutely. If you're a single person, you're a single woman, you're young, you're old, um, go for it. I was relatively young compared to some people when I um, moved in here. I was older than some others. <laughs> I have a friend right now who is building his second tiny house um, and he is a good bit older than me and probably older than most of you. Um, it's very very possible. I, I, as long as you're not dead, I think you can always pursue, um, you know, your dreams or making making something different happen in your life. And no, you can't do every single thing yourself. So don't be afraid to get to know other people and help them out, and um, you know, put some time and effort into that and. And it just, it's a system that, that works. Um, you know, I, I don't know, I had a friend call me the other day, she needed a ride back from the airport because her flight had been delayed and the original person coming to get her could, you know, was no longer free. Um, so I went and got her. It actually wasn't that convenient in my schedule that day, but I could make time to do it and so I, I did. And I know if I need something in the future that, uh, you know, as long as she was able to, she would arrange things to be able to help me out. So, I'm running out of room in my wheelbarrow. Um, that's just kind of my thoughts on that. Yes, absolutely, I, you know, I don't care what your relationship status is. If you want to do something, don't, don't feel like you have to wait till you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or are married or have kids or no longer have kids or whatever the case is. You can do this stuff, but also keep your um, eyes and ears out there for uh, ways to help people around you out and, and, and help each other because that just, that does make life so much easier. Hopefully that answer kind of makes sense in response to the question. Oh yeah, and uh, one of the awesome things about the internet, it can, you know, social media and stuff for finding can lead to a lot of being disconnected from other people. Um, but it can also be awesome for if you feel like, well, I'd like to do these things, but I don't know anyone who has a similar interest. You know, there's other weirdos like us out there and the internet is an amazing way to find them, even if you don't happen to live beside them or know them already. So, um, you know, find a, find a community of people who no, I, I don't know a single person who I have everything in common with or agree on every single thing with or anything like that. 
but you can find other people out there who have some of the same values and um, interests and activities as you do and whether you can find them down the road or across the country via the internet or on the other side of the globe you know whatever the case may be you can find them uh, because one of the other things uh, that research seems to show is that having a community of people whether it's your immediate family um, which may be awesome it may not um, some of us have families I know who um, it's it's not that great of a blessing to be near um, friends acquaintances whatever um, all the people when they study people who live longest like all the centenarians whatever the people who live to be over a hundred um, one of the biggest factors that seems even more important than their uh, you know diet and how they care for their health and so on which are all important and I uh, highly encourage people to be aware of those things um, one of the single most important factors in a long healthy life seems to be having uh, people around that you care about. So um, I encourage you if you don't have that to find some. Uh, if you gotta find a, I don't even know if these exist anymore. When I was a kid we had pen pal um, places you could find other pen pals who homeschooled or whatever you know, your particular thing was and wrote letters back and forth. I don't know if people still do that. Maybe there's email pals now. Um, but you can, you can find other people. Um, I promise there is somebody out there weirder than you. And <laughs> if nothing else, find somebody you can help. Um, that might sound kind of contradictory if what you're trying to do is build a community that will help you, but I, I think no matter how bad off any one of us are in our personal life, there's probably somebody out there who is worse off on some aspect or another and uh, just do something to help them out, even if they can't pay you back the, the rewards that you will get um, for your, you know, your own health and uh, satisfaction and all of that will probably uh, be worth far more than the thing you did for that person. And when you're out doing things with other people, even if that person doesn't end up ever helping you with anything in your life, uh, you will find other people. Um, and that's one more way to, to meet people. And yes, you will have people who never pay you back in any kind of way. Um, just, uh, you know, I've certainly learned over time that when you, you know, make food and stuff, people show up and then, uh, if you need something, by no means do all of those people show back up for you. But I still am blessed with plenty of people who do, and and I feel very, very fortunate for that. So again, tell me down below what's some of the best um, things and benefits, items, uh, skills, whatever that you've either been able to trade to uh, somebody for something or to help somebody else out with. Um, it would just be interesting to kind of make a whole, because I only know what I know and can think of the, the things I've done, um, but make a kind of like a resource list down below if somebody else is needing more ideas and says, well, I can't cook, that'll never work for me, or whatever the case is. Anyway, you all have a lovely day. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.